This is our first episode. La, 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 la. So it's crazy because we've been talk we talk about some random stuff all the time. People will always message us and be like, oh, y'all should make a YouTube. I guess like a lot of the stuff we do is hard for people to accomplish for themselves or something. When they see us doing it, they're like, how? Like what? How did you do that with two kids? Or how did y'all go there? How did y'all do this? But um, we always get into like really good topic discussions. Dang, which one should we do? Twitch. Uh, like two nights ago, we was talking about how he committed suicide. I didn't even tell y'all so. The whole point is we be eating. <laughs> right now, we are eating some peach habanero, which is really good. And... Black bean chips with black sea salt. Black bean chips, and they're really good too. This is our first time trying these black bean chips, and um, it's really good. So that's what we're snacking on. Mm. And I also have a protein smoothie that Babe made me yesterday. This is like the other half of it. Yeah, my protein because I just came back from the gym like a couple hours ago. But yeah, we were just talking about how crazy and just like how, how, how you leave the world when you commit suicide, like all the people that are impacted and like the thought process, like that's just something I guess you'll never really understand unless you have attempted to try to commit suicide. But I know for me, like I go through a lot of depressive, is that the right word? Depressive? De depressive? Depressive? I go through a lot of like depressive states throughout the year like where i feel really depressed and i'm kind of like down about whatever it could be triggered by anything like my check was short now i'm depressed like um i gained some weight um just overstimulated uh hung food you know sometimes i'm like dang like i want to switch up my palate especially because we're vegan you know we're still exploring different ways to like cook and stuff like that so sometimes our meals get really like simple because we just been eating the same that same meal for a couple of days or weeks and i'm like you know i need a new lifestyle change and i'll kind of get like depressed about that and on top of that i have really bad anxiety so i get depressed and then i get really anxious and it's just like a lot of emotions so i'm just like how does someone get to the point where they like or how do you know that you're getting to the point where you're like I feel like I want to leave this earth. Like, I don't, I'm not happy. Like, it's just no, there's nothing else I can do. Like, because I be trying everything. And, well, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what scares me about yeah, having depression. Getting to that point. Like, I feel like I be knowing when I'm getting to a place, I don't want to call it a dark place, but just like, you know, I get like a I don't care attitude. And that's when I'm like, I gotta get my shit together. Like, what's what's happening right now? Like, I just don't do a fuck. And it'll be like the smallest thing. Like, my kid will eat something off the floor, and like, I'm like, usually I'd be like, put that down, Troy. Like, don't eat that. But like, when I'm depressed or something, I'm just like, just let the house go to shits. I don't care. And that's when I'm like, I can't be like that. Like, I gotta get the fuck up. And that's when it, that's when it turns around. Like, I'm like, all right, here's my moment to get the fuck up. But. Some people, I guess, don't get to that point, or they just keep going backwards. I mean, hmm. I don't. They don't have that. They don't have that. I need to get my shit together in them, and it's it comes from someone else or something. Mm -hmm. Do you think that comes from childhood though? Because like, I know like my mom, it won't know, like even your mom too, like it won't know such thing as sitting around, in a lot of black families, matter of fact. <laughs> it won't know such thing as depression and anxiety, you know, and get your ass up and do the dishes. Like it was, it was stuff happening in the house that would make you not even be able to like deal with whatever it is. And that's probably why as adults now, we are trying to figure it out. But you know, like it was always something else to do besides be depressed. <laughs> yeah, it would have been um, it would have been easier to have yeah. guidance with those sorts of emotions. Yeah, like uh, when we when they were new to us. Yeah. Um, instead of having that for so long, and then it, you know, then saying, "Well, something's wrong." Right. You know, years and years later. 
Like, all I know is, like I always tell Babe, I would never leave my children on this earth. And this don't have really nothing to do with Twitch and his feelings or, you know, anything. I don't know. We obviously don't know what he, what his life was like. All we saw was stuff on the internet, yeah. you know. We don't know this man from nothing. We don't know what he was struggling with, what his family was struggling with. We don't know none of that. So, no judgment onto him at all. But um, I know for myself, I simply, like, even if I got the thought or the urge, I just could not leave my family. Um, you know, I know, I, I just know I'm needed here for not just my family, but tons of people. Like, I would be, that, just having that thought in my back of my mind when I'm thinking I'm about to do this, like, I'd be like, dang, I gotta call my friend and let him know I'm about to leave. Like, you know, just all, just all those little factors. Like, I don't know. I just don't, I wish I could, I guess I wish I could be in his brain. I wish I knew like what was preventing. Cause he, he looked like he had tons of support. Like he definitely had a family. He had tons of friends, like lots of people that loved him. So, hi, Peanut. Hey. <laughs> this boy wants some bread. Anyways, but yeah, so. Like I said, if I even got into that, if I, I guess that is like something mental, obviously it is, well, obviously it's mental, but, um, like I said, I just wish, you know, whenever, if, and this is if he even committed suicide, cause like I said, we don't know this man, we don't know what the heck the internet be putting out, you know, I mean, I'm sure if it was a lie, I feel like his family would have spoken on it or they might speak on it at some point, but because um, I know I wouldn't want my family member's name to go out like that if that wasn't the, his truth. Um, right. But if it is his truth, then, you know, I wish I knew what he was thinking. And I wish his family and friends knew what he was thinking. And um, like I always say, though, even if someone reaches out and be like, hey, I need help, like I'm, having, I'm struggling mentally, other adults kind of it's like what do you do like how do you help that person you're already going through something yourself and they're and they don't even know what they need from you like you could be like oh yeah like i'll help you what do you need like i don't know like it's just something going on with me like i just can't take it anymore like what do you say as the person who's being asked to help right like, how do you even help someone that feels that way and it's not really a lot you can do but listen to them and really just listen to them and maybe give them advice but at the end of the day it's something they have to kind of figure out on their own and and work towards and want to work towards so and hopefully they figure out and get into a space where they they don't want to do that and they want to reach out and express and yeah just call somebody and be like yo it could be anything you could say anything and I'm sure that person is going to listen to you and just hang out with you for a second to get your headspace back in a positive direction. Everybody's needed and loved so by somebody. Okay, but on a positive note, we moved here. We actually are living here in Cincinnati, Ohio. We're actually almost a year in May, so we have four more months on our lease. And um, it's been good. What you think? You think you like it's you like how it's been here in Ohio so far? Yeah, I, um, I think it's been better. Better than Raleigh, or what? Or better in what way? Um, yeah, that's what I mean. Better than definitely better than Raleigh. <laughs> um, just by I got a way better paying job than I had in Raleigh in a long time. I still have the same job that I had when I lived in Raleigh, but I mean, I've gotten a raise since then, so either way. Um, yeah, I'll say for me, um, I definitely wish we could have gotten out more because there's like a lot of theater and a lot of, um, there's just a lot more to do here. Um, um, as far as like activities, like we, we like to get out and do stuff with our kids. So we like, and we like to introduce them to different things. So like going to shows and like, um, yeah. like y'all know hiking, you know, there's a lot more mountains up here cause we're more North than just more in a mountainy higher elevation area, I guess, on the planet. Yeah. Um, and then, um, but 
everything's so expensive right now so we haven't really gotten to like do a lot a lot of that stuff but we have um we're actually going to the zoo today but it's snowing or it's on and off snowing so we're trying to see what's going on yeah but we're going to the zoo today other than that though i'll say like the energy is similar to raleigh north carolina where we moved from if you are familiar um we both were living in north carolina pretty much our whole lives um but we both were also born in new york and then i know for me we moved to pennsylvania first then we moved to north carolina then where did y'all start we started in new york then went where north carolina straight to north carolina goldsboro, north carolina. goldsboro though yeah yeah um we always lived in raleigh and then when i got older i moved like to durham but don't do that don't do that um <laughs> that was tragic um but affordable <laughs> get you a little strap and strap you'll be all right i ain't have nothing so i was scared um <laughs> I ain't had nothing for nobody if they bust my door down and I had a baby. So I was like, I got to go. I stayed there for three months and got the fuck. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, other than that, I lived in Raleigh most of my life. And uh, both of our kids were born in Wake Med in North Carolina, Raleigh. Um, so yeah, we just like, the way we ended up in Ohio, so like we came to visit the year before we moved here because we was just like traveling and we just was picking random places yeah. to go, like to eat vegan food, honestly. And <laughs> and we was just like, all right, like after we went to Tennessee for my birthday, we went to, I think DC, we went to Atlanta, we went to- um, And then we came here. Yeah, then we came here. So we came here and it was actually cold and snowing when we yeah, came. Like February. And I know for me, like if you know me, you like love the sun, like hot. But it actually wasn't bad. Like I was like, dang, I'm not bothered by the snow just cause like the energy and the aura. Mm -hmm. I guess it was like a feeling that brought us here more so than like what they had to offer, I guess. Yeah. Um but yeah, we came here and we had so much fun. It was just me, babe, and peanut. Uh, Troy was still a sperm, um, <laughs> so she was not even a thought um, when we went there the first year. But then when we came back, we was like, "All right, like we want to move somewhere, but where? Like we want to get out of North Carolina." Like for me, I haven't seen that since I was eighteen, and I think same for you. Like from the minute I had a car, I was like, "I'm getting the freak out of North Carolina. Like I'm leaving." And every year, like it was something. And when we had Choi, though, we was like, we not letting it stop us this yeah. time, cause we had we had the plan set. But then we found out I was pregnant, and it was like, ah, is this a sign that we should just stay here, and never go chase our dreams of traveling the world? And you know, the family was like, y'all gonna have a baby, y'all need the family, and we was like. <laughs> And we was like, nah, like, this ain't our first rodeo. Like, we good. Like, whatever. But like I said um, to Jermaine, like, we definitely miss having people to call and be like, can you take the kids? Like, yeah. we gonna go to the movies or something. Like, we definitely don't get a lot of that time. But we have to just, like I said, it's a sacrifice that you make when you want to travel and you want to uh, give your kids different experiences and just experience different stuff for yourself. Um... Cause I mean, we traveled, but we never, we've never lived anywhere where we didn't already know somebody. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Cause even when we moved to Pennsylvania, we knew, um, my cousin Keenan and all of them, my, uh, Monique and, um, Charlie, they was already out there. And who else? It was a couple people that my mom knew, like Adrian, and she knew mad people when we moved to Pennsylvania already. So like, it was like, you already had friends set up cousin set up like whatever so this was the first time we moved both of us somewhere where we didn't know anybody which actually i do know my cousin she lives in columbus though so that's like two hours away and she still hasn't even came to visit us big shade but we actually went to columbus recently matter of fact to go uh, eat last some, weekend, yeah. yeah to eat some asian food which was it was all right it ain't it won't like Atlanta. <laughs> they got the best vegan food i don't know 
Chicago was good too. Chicago? Chicago? Chicago was good as hell. We didn't get a chance to try everything because we didn't um go to the sushi place we found. We never got to try Ooh, that. Oh, and we and we had found like a cake spot, but we didn't get uh, to go because yeah, I was trying to find a cake found, for like, my birthday. Two cake spots. Yeah. yeah. See, we thinking about going back out there for oh, a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> so <boring. laughs> That's why we came here, and um, so far only my mom and my sister and my niece and nephew and um their dad came to visit us so far um which i think that's probably the only visit we're gonna get <laughs> it seems like because they was complaining about the drive up here already and then his side of the family hasn't came to visit us nobody from their side came to visit us yet so um yeah and it's like too expensive to fly it's too expensive to take the train um you gotta take like two three trains to get here so it's like a whole day's worth of riding the train. If you come with the train, you might as well drive. Um, gas is high. So here we go again, driving to go see everybody else. <laughs> That's why I say like, don't not do anything or don't not move out of state. Because I know for us, like if, if we ever just felt like, oh, we need to go back home, we can do that. Like we can just go back to North Carolina somewhere that we, I guess would consider like our safe, safe, uh, what they call it? Safe zone? What they call it? Comfort zone? Like our comfort zone? <laughs> yeah. Like that's our comfort zone. So like if it was just like, oh, like if we know we we know where we can get a place there. Like we know what, what companies to call and we can get approved. Like, you know, we know where stores are. We know what's the city, what's the country. Like we already know all that stuff about it. But when you don't take yourself out of your comfort zone, you don't grow. So, and that's pretty much what was happening with us in North Carolina. We were just feeling stuck. Yeah. We was feeling regular. We felt like we would just just go to work, come home, be a parent, go back to sleep, wake up, like boring. There was nothing to like explore. We knew every street. <laughs> I, I we damn near know everybody. Everybody we, they connected somehow. So you know that's when you know it's like all right, let's try to do something different. And we either gonna like it or we not. So we came. We gonna we here for a year, and we'll see where we go next. Definitely on the list to go to Mexico. Um, it, America's going to shits. It was going to shits when a George Bush. I was about to say how many presidents ago? Um, the first George Bush. Yeah, <laughs> the very first one. So when they when they took it from our our ancestors, that's when it started going to shit. Uh, and the indigenous people. <clears throat> um, so yeah. And I just don't see it getting any better anytime soon. And I just feel like, why not go ahead and take this opportunity while we are lease free? Like, once the lease is up, we'll be lease free. You don't have to worry about that, hitting our credit or anything. Um, as far as our car, I don't really know what we're going to do about that. But um, <laughs> we're just going to sell everything and pack our little suitcases and do our research. Do your research if you want to move out of state. Do your research. That's the biggest thing. That's what's going to make you the most comfortable about what you're doing is when you know what you're doing instead of just doing something all willy nilly. Like, be smart about it, especially if you have kids. You know, don't move to an area just because it seems fun, like, or, right. or it looks popular. Like, really think about it. Be logical. Like, do I really want to hear parties all night, every night, <laughs> every single day? No, you don't. You want to be close to it, maybe? Cool. Like, a 10 minute drive out? Sure. Like, we're 10 minutes, 15 minutes from the city, but. If I look at my window, you couldn't even tell. It looks like we're in the country. Yeah. Like, or not even the country, but just like a suburban neighborhood. Um, definitely not close enough to the city where we're going to be interacting with crackheads and <laughs> drug dealers and whatever else is going on at nighttime out there. Cops and stuff. Um, and then, you know, if you're young and you're single, definitely do it. Like, it's so many ways you can do it now. You could literally Airbnb hop. That's what I call it. Like, you could literally just hop from Airbnb to Airbnb in different places and pay your rent. Like, if you pay, most people are paying over $1,000 in rent right now. Yeah. You could get an Airbnb for a whole month for, like, half of that in certain places. So, you know, go. I always say, like, just try it. And like I said, if you get somewhere, you get out there in the world and you realize, like, oh, I'm scared. Like, I do want to be close to home. I do want to, or not even scared, but just you want to be home. You want to be close to family. 
you don't feel comfortable, like you miss those friends that you had, whatever the case may be, like you liked your job there, you want to go back, go back. Simple. Pack your stuff and go back. Probably could still get the same apartment because nobody's buying that expensive ass shit in Raleigh. <laughs> I don't know why they got apartments out there for $2,400, but no sir, no ma'am. You're bugging. So, yup. What else? Anything else about Ohio? I'd say the kids like it. They don't really have a choice, but um, <laughs> I'll say Peanut likes it. He liked it when we came the first time too because... Um, especially the parks and just like all the kids he started seeing like kids are actually outside here yeah um, that's another thing that was different about North Carolina you had to go to a playground to kind of see kids out, outside but in your own neighborhood where the, where, the, where the kids at why are they not outside I will say the last neighborhood we lived in the kids was outside but they were actually mean to peanuts so he wasn't really fucking with them yeah. they was bad they was always the boys was always wrestling and tugging on him and he's he's not like that he likes to play cars and you know be friendly and do they was just doing bad stuff so no but um kids come outside here they go outside like right after school they're out there um if we do take him to a park there's tons and tons and tons of kids so there's definitely gonna be at least two or three that he'll relate to um and just they have like the water um sprayer what's called the fountain they have like the water fountain thing yeah like the water park spout thing. yeah like it's all in in the one same area so he gets like both of his loves for parks in one so he likes that um and then just like riding the trains free out here to ride the trolley around the city um, um i will say it's more affordable here that was another plus that was another reason why we moved here so i did a lot of research um I'm the one that usually does like most of the researching of the details like because I think about like all the what ifs I'm the one that's paranoid about everything so like I'll look up everything like okay what if I get sick can I find a hospital like oh my god like uh what happens if something happens to my car oh my god can I get around like yeah like the bus stops right there um there's even if I don't want to take the bus I can walk to Kroger like I can definitely walk to Kroger it, it'll take me a while but It'll probably take me like 30 minutes versus just driving two minutes up the street. But yeah. if I had to do it, I could do it. Um, you know, um, just a job. You know, there's tons of jobs out here. Tons of warehouse jobs, tons of uh, call centers, stuff, whatever. The same crap that you can find in North Carolina. <laughs> um, and yeah food vegan food we was like you know is there a vegan community and there's not like a huge vegan community or there is actually a huge vegan community but there's not a huge um there's not a lot of restaurants which is weird because when we first came there was the first time we came to visit it was a bunch of vegan restaurants and we tried like, i feel like it was more yeah yeah we tried at least four or five restaurants and now it seems like there's only like two or three good ones like real solid ones that you can catch open all the time and I don't know if that had anything to do with COVID or like people not having enough money, enough funds. I don't know. Coming here has definitely been a difference and a, I guess eye opener, um, mind opener too. Cause you know, like I said, this was our first little trial and error state. Um, it wasn't too far from home to where like, I don't know. When we first like got here, we was like, dang, like what if the key didn't work to get in the house? Cause like we got here so late. We're not even about to get on that. We got here so late because we was waiting for my now ex friend and her husband to come help us move and get everything. We we woke up dumb early. We were trying to get this started early so we could get here at like a decent time, like four or five o'clock. We ended up getting here at like two AM in the morning, one AM, something like that. Um, after being up all day and Chris had to drive the whole way because we had a gigantic truck and I was scared for my life, like literally terrified to drive this freaking semi trailer with our car on the back. So Chris had to drive the whole time and we couldn't even go over the speed of what, 60? 
55, 60, 55 like that. because that would have been too fast for the trailer in the back and the car would have probably jumped off and did and who then knows the what fucking tire blew on the shit the freaking the tire the trailer that the car was sitting on the tire blows right at the borderline of north carolina and virginia like we wow, was shit. literally right there wow shit so we wasted two hours extra there on top of that. So we was already leaving. We already left late. Two, three hours behind. Then we was another two hours behind because of the tire. Then we get here and thank, thankfully, like, oh, my gosh, I was so glad the key worked because that was, like, my biggest fear. We was going to get here and be like, what the fuck we going to do? We stuck outside. And we can't call nobody because it's 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. That shit would have got kicked in, that's all. Yeah. We would have broken. I can't even hold you. We would have had to. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, for real. Like, it would it would have had to happen because we had our kids and we wasn't going to find no Airbnb. Like, we ain't even, it ain't even no hotels around here. <laughs> we would have had to drive the truck all the way back downtown. All the way back downtown, like no. We and Chris was like literally falling asleep driving y'all. Like he was like, like I kept talking to him. Like I was just trying. I was like, hold on, babe. Like you can do it. I felt terrible, but like I was literally having a panic attack in the in the passenger seat. So I could not even imagine or fathom to drive that truck. Like. And we didn't even need the truck to be that big. That was the issue too. Like when we left, the truck we got, we it got won't it. no trucks. It won't no trucks. Like that was the only one they had available. They didn't have the small, like normal sized one um, that we needed. Then we got here, and these niggas ain't even want to help us unpack the truck. And that was the whole point of them coming the to help us. <laughs> the whole point. We ain't even gonna bring them into this. So, uh, so it is stressful to move sometimes. But it worked out. And um, and honestly, I'll say now, I wish I would have did what I was intending to do when I got here, which was leave my past life of North Carolina behind me. And that's not like family, I mean. I mean, just like everything that I attached myself North Carolina-wise, like leave it in North Carolina. And when I get to North Carolina, I deal with it there and, you know, start a new direction here. But I tried to hold on to certain things when I got to Ohio that I should have let go. So I found out later on, and that's fine. I'm glad I found out sooner than later. And um, I'm glad that I'm making new friends now. Um, um, you know, doing new things. I'm freaking in the gym, which is crazy. I would have, I don't even know. <laughs> I can't even believe I've been going every other day. Um, so that's new for me since I've been here. Um, and like I said, I, we just, you know, try to do more stuff with our kids. Um, that's another thing, um, that has increased since we've been here. I think it was a little harder in North Carolina just because we had did everything, it seemed like, and all the options that we had to do with our kids, we had already done, and we just were kind of tired of doing those things. And then what else for us, you know, that stuff is exciting when you're new to the state. And when you've never been there and you want to go somewhere where it's, you know, a little bit city, like a small percentage of city, not like a big city like Chicago, but also still suburban. And like I said, you know, you haven't been living there your whole life, but when you've been living there your whole life and you know every street, it's just like that stuff seems kind of like blah. And I feel like everybody feels that way about the states that they live or they're from. So um, this isn't like to throw shade at North Carolina. It's definitely a good place to retire and settle down if you know that's where you're going but if you're still trying to travel and explore and learn like we do we learn something new every single day um you know so we needed to be somewhere where we can be artistically creative in our minds and open our minds and be vocal with our thoughts and opinions and you know whatever else is inside of us so I guess that's it. I think that's a good, we probably did like, what's this? This is 20 minutes. I think the other video was like maybe 15. So I think that was a good little first show. Yeah. Well, we about to actually go eat again because I'm hungry and I already ate all my vegan muffins. I need another snack. But if you tuned in today, thank you for tuning in. 
And um, our next episode is definitely going to be of us, like, actually cooking something, hopefully. Um, or I'm going to just post a lot of our old stuff. But, yep, episode one in the books. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye.